What is up everybody? Brett here and we're back playing some more Total War Warhammer 2 on my YouTube channel Good Talk Gaming. Today I've got an exciting 2v2 replay. I'm going to be jumping in as the Beastmen with my allies the Vampire Counts and we are up against the Lizardmen and Bretonia. So honestly I would say this this matchup favors our opponents. Um, Beastmen struggle against heavy cavalry. They struggle against large dinosaurs and for the most part unless you're bringing a, a heavy contingent of Vestigors you know, Saurus Warriors pound for pound beat the heck out of just about everything that the, you know, the Beastmen can field front line wise. So I try to take a nice diverse mix of units. I cut lots of costs by going with a Beast Lord and a, you know, a Bray Shaman with the Lord of Wild on foot. I took a few spells. I was hoping to showcase some of the spells uh, in this lore that weren't just the Saigor summon Savage Dominion. But of course that is the most powerful spell. We have Vile Tide. It's an explosive ability as well as Devolve, which is kind of a damage over time type of ability, but it can be resisted, which is kind of a unique mechanic here. My Saigor off to the side. This is just a standard Saigor. He's not the Regiment of Renown. Um, no Chevrons. He's not greatly accurate, but all you need is a few hits. You'll see here 10 Saurus Warriors dead from the first boulder. Let's see if we can land another one. Nope, swing and a miss. And that's pretty much what you should expect from the Saigor. About a 50-50 hit ratio, I would say. Let's slow it down a bit. I had lots of Vanguard deployed shenanigans off to the side. I figured my opponents would as well, and I was absolutely correct. There are two feral old ones here, the Velociraptors, out on the flanks. Trying to get in and around our, you know, our formation. Not really, a, honestly, not that great of an idea. Um, it's, it's great to flank, but the Vampire Counts in particular, they don't have artillery, they don't have ranged units, right? So exactly what are you going to flank, you know? And the Beastmen are pretty similar. Most Beastmen players don't even bring units like Ungor Raiders. They'll just bring Centigors with throwing axes and they'll get kited into oblivion. So, you know, this flanking maneuver perhaps was never really going to accomplish much. I'm able to get my Chaos Warhounds with Poison and we're going to tie down the Feral Cold Ones and then I'm going to try and follow up with some Ungor Herds. And also I have a pretty unique unit that I wanted to showcase, the Black Horns Ravagers. So these are the Regiment of Renowns for the Gore Herds with Shields. And they have Primal Fury, Rowdy, so Perfect Vigor and Extra Leadership is great. And also their Immune Psychology, and they have Vanguard Deployment. So, and just generally better stats all the way around. So I'm advancing with my front line. It's a mix of Ungor Spearmen uh, with some Bestigords in here for that heavy punch. They're going to be able to beat down Saurus Warriors and Korox Man Rippers and holding up the center. If I can get them on any large targets whatsoever, they'll do very well. But at the moment, I'm getting shot to pieces by the Bastilladon with the solar engine. And I really don't want to lose, you know, all these models of my Korox Man Rippers if I can help it. And we're just going to flat advance. I like having Spearmen out on my flank, especially against Bretonia, and mixed in with my front line. Because they're going to take the hits, and the Bestigors are going to deal the damage. A couple Ungor Raiders here to kind of keep them honest in case they have any sort of, like, Skink Priest on Pterodons. And they certainly do. Um, sometimes you'll, t you'll see, like, Skink uh, chiefs and those guys can just shoot at you all day long with their poison darts So having a few raiders can help to kind of counter that and I stuck some chaos warhounds with poison in the forest here in the hopes that I could help out my Vampire counts ally. So his army is a nice front line of zombies. I like that. They're gonna take the first hits uh, Any type of artillery trebuchet play. Um, they're gonna take the brunt of for the most part Graveguard mixed with skeleton spearmen not a bad choice. Graveguard will beat Bretonian infantry pretty handily, whereas the Spearmen can also help against large targets, cavalry, things like that. The Red Duke up on his dragon with a holy heck of a lot of spells and abilities, but Invocation of the Heck being the most important. Wind of Death can give you great value in these types of 2v2 scenarios because there's just so many units on the battlefield. And then El Seif, his unique ability, which lowers physical resistance and minus 45 melee resistance and speed. So he starts to chase you down. He pops LC on you. It lasts for 24 seconds. And any lord or unit that he uses this on just gets absolutely dumpstered. Especially if you use it in conjunction uh, with a terror geist. That, uh, that's pretty brutal. And I see there's two of them on the battlefield. So that's quite the powerful gooning squad. And just some direwolves here to help uh, perhaps try and wrap around the other line. So one of our opponent's Bastilladons is on this side of the battlefield helping out. They do fire damage, they do magic damage, um, they are going to be absolutely devastating against the 
the vampire counts. You know, Grave Guard are heavily armored, but with the type of armor piercing that they have, um, every shot that lands should kill models, and that's that's pretty strong. We have Questing Knights in the front line. Interesting choice to put them, you know, far in advance. There's really no danger of doing that because the vampire counts can't really, you know, they're not going to shoot you. So you can do that. You could charge in and get free value, but at this point, you're just going to get tar pitted by the zombies. So maybe not the best idea here. Two men at arms with shields and two men at arms with pole arms. This is just begging for a wind of death. An overcast wind of death would kill every single unit here. Just absolutely, you know, flip them upside down and destroy them. They, they would they would get dumpstered. So we'll see if he manages to do that this battle. I see Knights of the Realm, Grail Knights coming out of the forest here. I wasn't able to see them at first. I'm pretty sure they were hidden to me. And if I remember right, my Chaos Warhounds, I was a little slow in maneuvering with them. I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, Grail Knights to become <laughs> visible out of the forest and to, uh, to crush me. So Knights of the Realm... Great anti-large, and then Grail Knights, um, just an all-around great cavalry unit. Also anti-large, uh, but with perfect vigor, as well as some physical resistance. And we have some peasant bowmen, and they're going to be shooting onto my side of the battlefield, looking to aid the Lizardmen player as our front lines clash. Ungor Spearmen Herds, you know, they're not great, but they are cheap. And against Skinks, they'll hold their own just fine. Bestigor's Korox Man Rippers are going to crush these Soros Warriors with shields, that's for sure. And they're already rampaging. I'm trying to pick good targets for my Ungor herd. And my Beastman, Lord, who is super cheap when he's on foot, um, he is going to have that Primal Fury as well as all Beastmen do. Uh, but his main ability, if I can get that little icon out of the way, Apocalyptic Vision. So he can give leadership as well as melee attack and an aura around himself. And Horn of the First Beast. So whenever he's engaged in melee, he recharges this ability. But it's a charge bonus leadership melee attack. And it's to... 55 meters around himself so you can put him in the center of a big fight and he'll be able to get value for you that way so my Saigor is going to remain safe back here throwing away 37 kills on him the Sora's old blood is being kind of held back um, not quite sure why probably we'll get in there in just a second um, I'm trying to get these Ungor spearmen up and around and onto these Bastilladon because even a low tier spearman unit like this can give a Bastilladon a lot of trouble despite their heavy armor and you know here my Chaos Warhounds like I said they're going to be a bit mismicroed, and because of that, you know, when Grail Knights hit you, you don't really have time to recover. Either you see the charge or you don't, and a soft unit like Warhounds are not going to be able to recover from that type of hit. The front line here is finally advancing against the Vampire Counts. This Mortis engine is going to do a lot of draining and a lot of damage if it's allowed to live. Ooh, and here's a wind spell. Here we go. Let's get that full effect. Is he going to land it, though? Uh, it's a bit slow. You really have to time a Wind of Death. I mean, it's still going to look impressive and it's going to get kills, but for the Winds of Magic he just spent on that, it certainly wasn't worth it. If you're not sure, you know, about the timing of a Wind of Death, you should definitely wait until the front lines are engaged and then try and finesse like in, you know, a shot. But it's, it's a pretty hard thing to make work perfectly. And just like that, my Warhounds are routed. They're broken, and if they keep chasing, they're going to stay broken. And here we were able to chase off the Feral Cold Ones. Looks like I forgot my Warhounds up here. Uh, but my Blackhorns Ravagers and my Ungorn Herds are going to be moving back in to help engage. The Soros Old Blood has jumped back in to my back lines, and I decided, you know what, let's summon my Saigor. Instead of dropping him in a part of the battlefield where he can just shoot, let's use him to go one-on-one -on -one with the Soros Old Blood and to try and free up my Ungor Raiders. Uh, but a Chain Lightning here from the Skink Priest. And my units are routing right into it. They're luckily kind of just right outside the range, but here it'll look like it'll pick up a few more kills. Only six kills on that. Not the best chain lightning, but mostly unlucky. But my summon Saigor, not getting his full value, but for the moment he's tying down the Sora's old blood. And it's easy to underestimate them in melee combat, but they do have 400 weapon strength, uh, which if they hit an old blood, that'll do quite a bit of damage. And there's no longer any form of healing uh, on a standard Lizardman army. You have to bring Mazdamundi, or uh, high magic or you have to bring the rev crystal or else you're not gonna be able to heal up units like this so every bit of damage we do to the source old blood is gonna stick the peasant bowmen are moving in to try and help uh, we we're able to route one of them um, but I had my Saigor firing in that direction some of my spearmen are gonna be pulled to try and help defend my Saigor I have my strongest spearmen unit destroyers of the Drakenwald and they have poison so as soon as the Grail Knights get in here, they're going to be poisoned, their stats are lowered, and they're going to have a hard time escaping. 
from this fight. Not maybe that they want to escape. They don't really need to at this point. Um, but if I let them get into my side gore, they're going to do a ton of damage. But I'm pulling all of these damaged and rallying spearmen units in here. And we're going to see if we can't tie down and kind of um, drag down these very expensive cavalry units. Um, that's not really a fight they want to be taking. My best of gore's here, chewing through the Soros warriors. Let's go check and see how my ally is doing. My beast lord is just chasing down um, some archers. But this is a pretty dirty fight here. This is a standard Bretonian lord on a hippogriff. And fighting the Red Duke is not going to have much of a chance. Um, Red Duke using Invocation of the Heck right now, popping himself off in this battle. Um, without spells, you know, pretty even fight. But when you can combine LC um, with Invocations of the Heck, you know, a standard Lord doesn't have a single chance. But, no, nope, there's an Earth Blood going off. So there's a Lore of Life caster on the field doing laps. She's here. Is she on a unicorn? Nope, she's on a standard horse. So she doesn't have that magic resistance. But she looks like she's taking quite a bit of damage. The Questing Knights have Shield of Thorns. So using them in the front lines is not a bad choice. They're heavy armor piercing. Uh, decent charge bonus is going to allow them to chew through Graveyard. Um, but you definitely want to be cycle charging them as best you can. But once the Graveyard go, there's so much here. The Grail Relic plus the Lord still being alive is making it so that all of these units that might otherwise have routed to the Terror of the Dragon are still standing and fighting. The Lord needs to die. Um, would be great to kill the Damsel as well. I know that's easier said than done. But Stand Your Ground is giving all of these units melee defense and leadership. And in a prolonged fight, the Red Duke is already at his healing cap. Uh, he can't get any more life than he already has. I see one Terror Geist is still left. The other one is, looks like he's in the pits fighting. He needs to get up. He needs to get out into the air. Um, I'm sure there's probably a Breath Attack 2 uh, left on them. And yeah, just stuck on the ground like this against Questing Knights. You know, pole arms coming in. That's not the best fight, but the Mortis Engine slowly but surely is keeping it healthy and is draining the HP of all of these units. And there we go. They start to shatter off. And the Vampire Counts are still in good shape. Meanwhile, the Lizardmen are still here. So the entire army of Bretonia shatters. It's pretty rare that this happens, even in 2v2s, that one of the player's armies will shatter while the other one is still doing okay. Um, and honestly, they still had a lot of tools left. I'm seeing a lot of health left on the HP bars. And, yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I wanted to keep fighting that one out, uh, but that was it. Kind of just the overwhelming grind of the vampire player. Um, so what ended up happening was, and this is how I would kind of uh, frame this battle. I feel like I had a lot of tools to deal with the Lizardman player's army. Um, getting the, the early picks on the Feral Cold ones was pretty key. Uh, my front line was able to pretty handily beat down um, the Soros Warriors. You know, just sometimes it's not about who trades the most evenly you have to also have to figure out you know gold costs as well Saurus this many Saurus is pretty expensive compared to you know my pretty cheap Ungor Spearmen with a few expensive Bestigors thrown in who are actually winning their battles so when you kind of sit down and really break down you know the gold costs of our respective front lines um, we came out so far ahead so the low kill counts on some of these units definitely played a factor uh, the Bastilladons were great this game um, we were able to tie down one of them pretty early with some spearmen, uh, but the other one that was able to sit and fire at the uh, the Vampire Counts player did a lot of work. So what our opponents did that we didn't do was we didn't deploy together at all. Uh, I had a large army that I kept separate. He had a, you know his army that he kept separate. And our opponents did something that's very good sometimes, but in this game I think it was perhaps working against them. They somewhat divided... Um, their their forces to help each other right that was the general idea uh get one of these bacillodons helping your ally you know they'll use some of their their cavalry on my side of the battlefield um but what ended up happening was each army was a little bit weaker for that um had all of this cavalry um these knights of the realm and these grail knights been on the other side of the battlefield you know rear charging vampire counts front line um these terror guys could not deal with these knights of the realm and these grail knights in a blob Instead, they got caught up fighting, you know, my cheap spearman units hoping to take down a Saigor. So, in a way, he was coming to the aid of his ally, but he left himself weak because of that. And the Vampire Counts player was able to take advantage, uh, you know, really grind down the Lord and kill him. And then by the time all of these, you know, very expensive assets were coming back, they had taken huge damage 
and there was really nothing left to support on this side of the battlefield. Two and zero kills on these archers. Um, you know, that's that's not a lot of value there. And against the vampire counts, they should have been able to sit back for the entire battle and just shoot and generate value. Uh, but unfortunately, they were not. Uh, they were probably shooting at things like terror geists. Um, so that would explain the low kill count. I'm sure they did damage. But once I was able to turn my Saigor onto them, um, they had a tough time. And then the Lizardman player, you know, their front line got a bit overwhelmed. A bit of unlucky uh, chain lightning cast there. Could have very easily gone their way and gotten 100 kills. You know, sometimes that happens. But in the same way, you know, the Vampire uh, Coast player's Wind of Death didn't land the best contact either. So, you know, there's a bit of hit or misses there. And I had a few moments of miss micro. Um, but ultimately, I like my, my army composition. I didn't know about the Beast Lord on foot. The way the battle ended up shaking out, he felt not useless. Useless is the wrong word. He felt ineffective. Uh, in the front line, I was worried about using him because of the Soros Old Blood just going in on him really hard. And in the back line on foot, he's just too slow to kind of chase down units. You either have to use him in the front line or or don't. I mean, there's no you can't really use him to chase down units. And you know, getting my second Sigor summon really allowed me to tie down the uh, the Soros Old Blood. But had this build been a bit different, uh, I could see my build being easily overwhelmed uh, by what was on the other side of the battlefield. But great play either way from my ally and from my two opponents. It was a fun game, and you know, nobody was taking this game too seriously. It was just for fun. And army compositions obviously are not the meta, but yeah, so sometimes it's just about having fun, guys. And speaking of having fun, uh, the next Ever Chosen tournament is coming up. For those of you who maybe only follow Total War through my channel, and perhaps not some of the others, I would encourage you to subscribe at least to the Total War uh, YouTube channel. They are having a big tournament. I want to say it's on the 5th. So it's coming up. It's just in a couple days, and they'll be revealing the new DLC I'm not sure if they'll be playing it. I'm not sure if there'll be a trailer beforehand. Uh, we can speculate on that. I've been around the, the community for a while now. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to release a trailer, a teaser trailer, maybe on upcoming Thursday. And then on the weekend, I think we'll see some of the units slash lords or just some of the DLC stuff. We don't know what yet uh, exactly. We have a good idea, though. Uh, we'll see some of that in action in the tournament, hopefully, because that would be amazing. It's kind of what they've been doing. They did it last time with the Vampire Coast. Uh, they kind of announced it, showed the trailers, teased it, and then they had a tournament. Boom, people could use the Vampire Coast units, and it generated a ton of hype. They had thousands of views, so I'm sure they want to just keep doing that and, uh, yeah, just generate more hype for the upcoming DLC. And I am hyped. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the DLC and FLC for Total War Warhammer, uh, the whole 1, 2, and hopefully 3 coming soon, you know, it can't come fast enough. So, guys... That's it for me today. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you subscribe if you haven't already. Consider doing that. It helps me out a lot. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And I hope that you consider sticking around and watching more videos. All right, guys. That's it for me today. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.